so it lives. What is up guys, Technical Stinkers here, checking in on our little 3D print operation for the day. If you're new to the channel, uninitiated, or unfamiliar, I do 3D printing here at home, stuff to improve my life, fix stuff around the house, sell on the internet for money sometimes, or just generally show off and have a good time. If you're interested in any of those things, be sure to subscribe to the channel. A little extra spring in my step this morning because we got a successful print off the Elegoo Orange Storm Giga Blue Storm Terra conversion. Although I think based on the amount of modifications that I've had to do and the amount of, and again, a lot of people help me in this process, but there's not exactly like a really clear guide on how to do this. Luke's lab has a guide, but you have to pull info from a million different places. Uh, I feel entitled to rename this into something else other than Blue Storm Terra. Um, you know, I was thinking like it's a nice printer and my favorite color is black. So maybe like the black storm. <laughs> Just kidding. But, uh, you know, going through this process, um, had to make a lot of modifications and we're not completely out of the woods yet. Obviously my benchy here, it leaves a little bit to be, a little bit to be desired. Um, but I think a lot of this will have, comes down to the fine tuning stuff. So that's what I'm working on right now. You can see over here in my mainsail. So right now I'm working on uh, the temperature tower. I'm gonna go from there into the flow rate testing and all the other, you know, sort of uh, baked in tests that Orca Slicer has for the printer to kind of, you know, take some of this down. I did a PID test. I did a, um, uh, what's the other thing called? What is it called? The thing where you, I can't believe I'm whiffing on this. It is early. The thing where you print a hollow thing and you check for blobs on the corners and then you do a modification from there. Um, I did that. And so the printer is, it's printing. I can't believe it. And you know, not to sing my own praises here, but if you're a fan of the channel, you know, I'm not, a, I'll let you know a secret. I'm not a tinker, uh, <laughs> at least in, in this regard. And this was an exceptional level of tinkering. It's basically building a whole printer, you know, and I was thinking about it earlier, and that's why I feel entitled to rename the Giga, is aside from like the frame, mounting motors, string and belts, I basically built the whole printer. Um, and because I got to a point where I thought, you know, what haven't I done on this machine? And it's like basically, you know, build a frame to all those things. You know, all the guts have basically been removed. Power supplies are like in one from one and distribution hubs, not a big deal. Mounting motors and belts, sure, you gotta know about timings and number of teeth and tension and all that kind of stuff. But all that stuff see, at least seems to me a lot easier than the configuration side of things. And so it kind of feels like I, well, let's not say I built a whole printer from the ground up. I would say I built 80% of a printer um, with guides, a lot of help, a lot of chat GPT that didn't help at all, uh, but mainly kind people, you know, giving me tips and advice. So. That's where we are with this. I'm gonna to try to slap together some kind of video. I'm not gonna talk in the video. I'm just gonna show B-roll and kind of explain it through text so people can like pause and, and I don't know how much more helpful it will be to people doing this, but if there's anybody out there like me, which I imagine a good portion of people are, that are unhappy with their Giga, but there's no point in selling it because no one's gonna buy it because it's such a huge printer. It's, you'd have to take such a bath on it. Uh, that wanna get it to work right, you know, if they're willing to spend 2,500 on a printer, they're probably willing to spend another, let's say 1,500 uh, in parts to get it up and operating. And I haven't proven that it's, you know, gonna work really, really well, but it, everything looks very promising. So I'm gonna put together a video on that with steps of just what I did and all my files on, I'm gonna upload them to my maker world, link in the description below, because I've done a lot of uh, sort of, let's say fabbing, but you know, like for instance, the Kraken mount, this is, you know, heavily modified to go within the standoffs that are in the cavity, the electronics bay of the Giga. So I have that on there. I have a little fan housing because I gotta get cool air in uh, before I seal it up. And the little fans on there are kinda weak. So what I did is I took one of these little blower, these little two amp blower fans off one of the uh, spare Giga print heads and then just made this that fits over one of those openings. And that way it can, uh, it can sit right on top of the existing standoffs and then this puts on here, little screw goes in there, and that way you have cool air coming in through here that blows right on to the Kraken. Also pulled out my FLIR camera, check this out. I was trying to uh, check for hot spots mainly to see if there are any areas on the board, you know, as I do the cooling process, uh, so I know where to direct the air. 
I was also checking for uh, hot spots on the wires because one of the things that I hope to do once I get it all dialed in, oh, it's starting. So my Z offset is a little, here, you, you stay there and watch it. My Z offset's kind of screwy. So that's one thing I need to dial in. My Z offset um, is absolutely perfect when the printer's just idle. But when it starts to print, try to home this thing while the, everything's up to temperature before it starts. Are you gonna drop filament down? Into, okay, that's fine. Like my Z offset is absolutely positively perfect when the printer's just chilling. But when it starts to print, it's off by maybe like, I don't know, eighth of a millimeter, quarter millimeter maybe. And I can't seem to get it to save that Z offset uh, when it comes over here to its priming area. I really would like to change where it primes to. Uh, so that's all stuff I gotta figure out. It's not contacting the plate, that's just filament that oozed out, I guess. There we go. Don't scratch my shit. All right, I'll keep, I'll keep working on it, but the point being is that it needs to, uh, the Z offset doesn't seem to save uh, between each print, even though I like save the config and it's fine when it's idle. So I don't know if it's a, I don't know, I'll figure it out. Anyway, what I was talking about earlier, the FLIR cam, the, high, the infrared vision, uh, looking for hot spots on the wires, because my plan is once I get it reliably working, I probably am going to take it all apart and <laughs> replace a lot of the wires. For instance, the, uh, the cables here, the power cables and CAN bus that power the EBB42. See the main cable that comes in from the board, noticeably thick. That's meant to power this distribution board back here. And the wire that comes out is noticeably thinner gauged than this main wire. And so I thought, you know, I've got all this power hungry stuff down here. Maybe it makes sense just to cut the head off of this XT32 plus two and wire it straight into the EVB42 because I'm never gonna run multiple print heads at the same time. I might as well just mainline it into here instead of passing through this distribution board because this Molex connector is easy enough to take out if I do need to service the print head. These are fine. Uh, these are mostly fine, but there's a lot in here that leaves a lot to be desired. A lot of these solderless connections that I did are a little weak. Um, also, I'm gonna take the Kraken out. I'm gonna put it on a new plate, one that's higher. This is one I tried to do an ABS in the Flash Forge, but got that ABS lift going on no matter what I really do. The surface finish in the middle though, fantastic Flash Forge, but you know, bed adhesion, eh, not so much. And again, if you're following along in this process, I'm putting all these on my Maker World so I get points or whatever. As far as non Orange Storm Giga stuff or whatever I end up calling it, got my Tatsumaki model here. Did a short, put the short here, Matt. A nice big model too, courtesy of uh, Dynamu 3D. Special shout out to him. He had sent the model over. Uh, he's the one that did the Biker Peach. A lot of NSFW models, but this one's, you know, safe enough, I guess. One Punch Man's an anime, new season's coming out, so I figured, like, you know, there's gonna be people looking for that. Check out the hair. I did this at a .12 to try to get a lot finer layer height. Now, this is regular PLA, not matte, with a big top Z distance, so I wanted the supports to really break off, and I'm really kind of happy with how it came out. It could be a lot finer, and I could have, like, you know, heat smoothed it better, but overall, not too bad. Uh, considering like all the little overhangs and nooks and crannies in the hair. Came out pretty good. Surface finish of the model, is there a good place for me to show that? Um, very nice, 0.12 layer height, definitely uh, helping. A lot of kind of where supports contacted though, discoloration, couldn't get rid of it. I tried using a piece of filament and a torch to kind of melt more of that uh, matte flesh colored filament on, on her ass <laughs> to kind of smooth it out. Didn't work. <laughs> it's a, it's a botched plastic surgery job right there, if I ever saw one. She went to the discount spot over on Freedom Drive. Charlotte people know what I'm talking about. Anyway, name of the game, obviously Orange Storm Giga. Big wins, very happy. I'm, like, I'm gonna vlog about it. Uh, next steps though, rewiring stuff, putting cooling in place, and then I wanna really work on the fan. So I've got the Raspberry Pi Cam 3 in here, and I'm gonna use Moonraker as like monitoring the print and also to do my time lapses. And once I can prove that I can get those good smooth time lapses, uh, I'll probably order an extension cable for it so I can get like lower in the height because the Raspberry Pi is gonna be mounted way up there 
and the camera cable's like this long. So just trying to suss this thing out, go through the configs, get a better example, but I gotta tell you, I'm gonna be hanging on to this Benchy because this is, um, well, this is a $4,000 Benchy. Uh, <laughs> and uh, I want to save that. Again, appreciate all the help and advice and support. Special shout out to LTX Designs, 3D by D, everybody in the comments helping me through this process. It's been invaluable, um, very happy thus far. And hopefully I can continue that progress and start getting some like consistent high quality prints uh, and get it set to the point where I'm not worried about it unattended because that's another huge thing. I've got wires that I don't really trust and you gotta trust your 3D printer. I don't want fires to break out. So I'm gonna go through and do the best I possibly can with wiring and make sure everything's super duper safe. Probably use the FLIR cam some more. That thing's been very helpful in identifying hot spots and um, just tighten it up, make it look a little bit better. Let me know what you think about all these things in the comments below. If you have a Giga, would you be interested in that tutorial tutorial video or just kind of a how I did it video? Let me know what you think about that. Be sure to like the video because it's a nice thing to do and subscribe for more content like this. I'm Tentacles, see you next time.